pleasure to be back with everybody again with AIU. Um, I'm excited that you're joining me for this session. We're going to explore a key component of the Montessori philosophy and pedagogy uh, known as grace and courtesy. And if you've been here for any of my previous classes, uh, then you know that Montessori is really my passion uh, and where my heart lies. And I love sharing information about the Montessori philosophy and pedagogy. Um, but grace and courtesy is something that's uh, wonderful because it, it can be applied uh, in many different settings, uh, the classroom, the home, and uh, the public sphere, and with uh, people of all ages. So it's definitely something uh, that everyone can find value in. Uh, yes, Dr. Lambert, thank you for the reminder. If you have questions or comments throughout the presentation, please feel free to pop them in the chat or use the raise hand feature. We will have uh, plenty of time at the end for questions as well, but if something catches your attention or um, you have something that you're wondering uh, throughout the presentation, please feel free to, to kind of pop that in the chat or raise your hand and we can discuss it as we continue. So before we jump into the content, I'd like to share a few details that define me uh, as the host and the creator of this presentation. So my name is Heather White. I'm a former Montessori classroom teacher, administrator, and in-home caregiver with uh, more than 15 years of experience in the world of education. I now work as an educational coach. I work in multiple roles with the Center for Guided Montessori Studies, including their alumni conference and webinar coordinator. Uh, they coordinate some of their professional development courses. And I also work as an instructional guide supporting adult learners who are working to receive their certification. Uh, in addition to that, I'm a blog writer and content creator for a couple other organizations, including the American Montessori Society, Guide and Grow, and Mirrors Toys. I hold Montessori certifications from the American Montessori Society at the three to six and six to nine age groups. And I also have experience working with the zero to three and nine to 12 populations as well. I have a master's in education with a concentration in Montessori studies and an education specialist degree in school psychology. And I'm also a nationally certified school psychologist. So during our time together today, we're going to discuss what this idea of grace and courtesy is. We're gonna start there with a really fundamental just definition of these terms. And then we'll discover how these lessons are presented in the classroom and we'll explore some common examples at various stages of development, including early childhood and the elementary years. And then we'll close with a discussion of why grace and courtesy is so important. So as I often do, I like to uh, start with a quote and wanted to do the same here. I feel like it really helps us focus in on the topic of our presentation, and really provide some inspiration as we learn more. So Dr. Maria Montessori once said, social grace, inner discipline, and joy. These are the birthright of the human being who has been allowed to develop essential human qualities. And it's that social grace that we're going to focus on during our time together today. It has lots of different names. You can think of grace and courtesy as uh, social skills, as kindness, uh, social grace, as it's mentioned here, um, but all of those things, all despite the term that we might use, really refer to what Dr. Montessori said is just something that is essential and is an inner component of all of us as human beings. So Dr. Montessori believed that children really are a hope and a promise for mankind. Those were the specific words that she used. And grace and courtesy lessons are the origins of those beliefs that she developed. They're a really integral part of the Montessori curriculum, starting with the very youngest children, even in those infant and toddler years, and then continuing all the way up through adulthood. And grace and courtesy really uh, emphasizes respectful and considerate interactions among people, um, whether that's a child to child relationship or between children and adults. Uh, grace and courtesy really refers to those social skills, like I was saying, or manners you might refer to them as, that allow individuals to 
engage with one another in respectful, harmonious ways. Grace specifically uh, appeals or applies, I apologize, applies to the way that a person carries themselves. Um, so you can think of this as how someone might have poise or elegance um, and that respect, showing respect for someone else. Courtesy, on the other hand, is more engaging in a polite and considerate way. Dr. Montessori noted, grace and courtesy are among the first lessons and human relationships that we give to the child. They are, in the simplest form, the manners of everyday life. So lessons that really help children to learn these different social skills or social st strategies are taught in the Montessori philosophy and pedagogy so that they are empowered to navigate their relationships with friends, to engage in collaborative work together, um, really so that they're able to develop these skills that will benefit them throughout their lifespan. Another really great quote from Dr. Montessori in her work entitled The Montessori Method was, considering the method as a whole, we must begin our work by preparing the child for the forms of social life, and we must attract his attention to these forms. So she really saw grace and courtesy or these ways of engaging with others in kind, respectful, polite, considerate ways, and with poise and grace uh, as a way to really benefit human beings to impact the world in a positive way through the way that we engage with one another. So in the Montessori classroom and in Montessori homes, grace and courtesy lessons can be presented in a variety of ways. When it comes to teaching these lessons to really young children, the most basic step is modeling. We're modeling the appropriate behaviors because children in that first plane of development, if you were here uh, for several classes ago, we talked about the Montessori concept of the planes of development, which was uh, what Dr. Montessori called kind of the stages that, that we go through as human beings as we progress. And they each have identifying characteristics um, and goals that we accomplish. And so in that first plane of development, which is ages zero to six, Young children just naturally absorb everything in their environment. They're always watching what we're doing as adults or even other children, especially older children. Um, they're watching our behavior. They're watching our interactions. They're listening to our words and they're really soaking all of that up. In fact, Dr. Montessori referred to this period as the period of the absorbent mind because they're just soaking everything up like sponges. So that's why it's so important for a very young child that we're modeling how to engage with others in respectful, courteous uh, ways, and also that we're carrying ourselves with poise and grace. Grace and courtesy is first modeled by a teacher, um, but there are also lessons, explicit lessons that we teach to the children. So in an early childhood classroom, so let's say with children that are three to six years old, Teachers will often invite about two to four children over for a little small group uh, lesson where they'll engage with them and help them learn a new concept. So during this time it, for grace and courtesy lessons specifically, the teacher would show a step-by-step -step process, a step-by-step -step explanation of a specific way to engage with someone in a courteous or graceful manner. So it might be something like, how to pull out and push in a chair, how to hold the door open for someone else, how to introduce yourself. So although these things might seem pretty simple, um, for a very young child, breaking it down into the most simplest terms and really helping them understand step-by-step step how to engage in these courteous and graceful ways is really powerful. See something in the chat, I see some hellos. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Anna. In some other situations, even in the early childhood classroom, so with those three to six-year-old children, you might want to role play with them. Um, you can role play with the older children in the environment. You can role play with just the adults for the children, right? Almost like you're putting on a little uh, show for them. 
And then you can invite them afterwards to engage as well so that they have the opportunity to practice the skills that you're showing them. Maybe how to greet someone, how to politely interrupt a conversation. Reading books that are on the child's uh, reading level or that are appropriate for their age level on specific topics related to grace and courtesy can also be really helpful because it allows the child to understand things uh, in a way that is easy for them to grasp. And it's really engaging because of the uh, visuals or the pictures that are included. They really draw the children in. For example, there's a book entitled uh, Harry P. Spader, Personal Space Invader, that really kind of adds some humor to the idea of respecting someone else's personal space. There's another great book called Do Unto Otters, a book about manners. And it, um, as you can imagine, it it's a kind of play on words of do unto others as you would like them to do unto you, but it includes otters instead of other people. Um, and it really explores that golden rule of polite behavior, how to be a good friend and how to be a good neighbor. Um, but the fact that it says do unto otters, obviously children are kind of fascinated by, and anytime you can include animals or humor, uh, it appeals to that young child. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, Heather, I, I just want yeah. to check which slide are you on? I want to make sure we're seeing the same slide you see. I am on the slide that says, how are grace and courtesy lessons presented? And okay, we're good. It, okay, perfect. <laughs> so we went over those at the bottom there. We went over those three different strategies. We, we went over modeling and how to provide explicit instruction, those step-by-step -step lessons. We talked about role playing, right? Kind of uh, involving the older children or the adults in the classroom and doing a little uh, demonstration or a show and then inviting the younger children to act it out and participate as well. And then reading books. Um, and we gave a couple examples there. Let's see some notes here in the chat. Let me, lots of greetings and good mornings. Thank you everyone for being here. Because the students in the elementary classroom have entered into a new plane of development. So we go back to that idea of the planes of development, right? And so now we've shifted from zero to six into six to 12. And in this six to 12 plane of development, uh, children really are able to process situations differently. So that introduces this opportunity to utilize group problem solving and what we call in the Montessori philosophy uh, community meetings. And these allow us to introduce these grace and courtesy skills in a new way. So while role playing, explicit instruction and reading books can continue with this age student, um, small meetings between a couple of classmates or even larger community meetings where the entire group comes together um, and has discussions really can be helpful for students to navigate these social situations. And during these group meetings, students will learn how um, civil discourse happens, right? The role of civil discourse and how it's uh, polite behavior to allow one person to speak at a time, how you let someone know you have something to say to participate in the conversation by raising your hand or you know whatever that might look like, the rules that are established for the community meetings. And it empowers students because they're able to discuss situations that are happening. Maybe it's a disagreement among peers. Maybe it's something that's happening in the classroom that's frustrating someone such as the classroom's too noisy. Um, in the, the Montessori classroom, we often allow um, children to independently access snacks. And so it might be that uh, children are taking too much snack and then there isn't enough left over for the friends that want to have it towards the end of the morning. Um, so it, these community meetings provide this really uh, powerful way for children to bring up things that are bothering them, things that are frustrating them, problems that they need to solve, and then working together to develop solutions. And students really do a beautiful job when you set up these parameters for them and give them the opportunity uh, to, to have these problem-solving discussions. They really have a great way of evaluating different solutions 
finding things they think will work for everyone, coming to agreements, and then revisiting things if they're not working and, and kind of working through that problem solving situation again. These lessons are so powerful, so important for children to learn because they're really this solid foundation of how we navigate solving problems throughout our entire lifespan. And check the chat again. I see some more good mornings, good mornings and hellos. Hi, Charles. So then here are some common examples of grace and courtesy lessons um, by age level. So we're really gonna break it down so you can see what some of these lessons might look like that you would present to children based on their developmental age. So for infants and toddlers, uh, I wanna start by saying that that modeling is crucial at this age. So it can be something as simple for an infant as um, instead of just changing their diaper or changing their clothes and being distracted, talking to someone else, really making eye contact, letting them know by talking to them what you're doing, something as simple as, I'm going to change your clothes now. All right, now it's time to change your diaper. Just that very polite, graceful way of engaging. And it can seem a little silly to us as adults sometimes to have these conversations with uh, a human being who's not able to respond, but they're not able to respond verbally, right? You can look for ways that they're engaging with you. It might be a smile, eye contact. Um, you might also have, uh, depending on the child's age, they might coo or kind of respond um, in ways verbally that aren't in words, right? Um, but there, it's still this back and forth interaction and you're really establishing this strong foundation that they understand how to engage with another human being in a peaceful, kind, courteous way. As the child gets a little bit older, so let's say that toddler age specifically, this is where you're focusing on helping them learn how to take turns with one another, helping them learn how to put away their toys or their activities, how to say please and thank you, how to wave hello and goodbye to people. Um, and again, you're introducing these things by modeling for them inviting them to try it. Maybe you read books on how to say please and thank you. Maybe you read books on how to put your toys away or clean up a space. Um, there's a really neat one time called It's Time to Clean Up that has little sliders that it, it uh, for the toddler age child that shows them when they slide uh, the little tab on the side, how the, the room, their bedroom, the classroom, the living room goes from dirty to clean. Um, and children are, you know, anytime they can be actively involved in reading a story like that, they get excited. So these are some ways that you can involve an infant and a toddler age child in learning how to uh, use these graceful and courteous ways of engaging with others. Moving on to the early childhood age, you'll notice there's a lot more examples here, and that's because Dr. Montessori realized that in this period, children are in uh, what she called a sensitive period for these grace and courtesy uh, experiences or ways of engaging with others. And that sensitive period she defined as a time when you have a heightened ability to gain some new skill, absorb some new knowledge. And so this is really the age that children explode uh, in this interest in how to engage with others. And really, again, it's, it's based in that absorbent mind. They're replicating what they see us doing as adults or what they see older children doing. So some things that you can introduce to them uh, to help them engage in graceful and courteous ways at this age, so three to six years old, are things like how to cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze um, and covering your nose, something that we often use in uh, the classroom is we encourage them to sneeze into their elbow or cough into their elbow. Uh, how to push in your chair or pull out your chair. Removing your shoes before you come inside. A lot of Montessori classrooms because it's intended to feel like this comfortable home setting. In fact, um, the very first Montessori classroom 
Dr. Montessori called Casa dei Bambini or home of the child in Italian. And so to make it feel like this home setting, children often take their shoes off and either have slippers uh, or they wear their socks in the environment just so that they're a little more comfortable and it keeps the space a little more clean and tidy. And so we we show them how, what that looks like, how to take their shoes off um, before they come in as a polite way to keep the space nice and clean. Uh, how to respect other people's personal space. How to wait patiently in a line. This is a big one in the classroom setting is specifically, right? Um, but also can be helpful in public spaces. If you go to a theme park or you're waiting in line um, to order food or that's something that can be really hard for children, especially young children because it's they're so impulsive, it's hard for them to wait. Um, how to politely interrupt a conversation, holding the door open for someone, saying, excuse me, um, helping someone by picking up something they've dropped, and then also how to wait for your turn to speak in a group um, or, or paired conversation. At the elementary level, again, remember these children are ready for a little bit more when it comes to grace and courtesy skills. They're ready for for a little bit more when it comes to problem solving because they're a little bit older. And elementary age children um, can be encouraged because of that to take these grace and courtesy skills to a new level. And particularly that appeal to their interest in social morals, social interactions, and also justice. Um, going back to that idea of sensitive periods again, Dr. Montessori said that the elementary age child is really fascinated with um, and in this social uh, or in this sensitive period for social interactions, morality, fairness, um, discovering their place in the world, discovering how the world around them works. And so these are some of the ways that you can really um, encourage children to engage in graceful and courteous interactions for the elementary age. So it might be how to solve a disagreement, how to ask a question, how to introduce someone to someone else. So maybe you're introducing a friend to a family member or you're introducing a family member uh, to your teacher. How to change the subject politely. Children uh, in this age, six to 12, really have these intense interests. And so they might not be interested in talking about something that someone else has started a conversation about. So how do you change the subject of that conversation in a way that's not perceived as uh, impolite. How to decline to answer a question um, that feels intrusive or that you're not comfortable with. How to respond to a friend that's ill uh, or has a family member that's ill or maybe that lost a family member or a pet. How to decline or uh, a hug or a touch that you don't feel comfortable receiving. Uh, how to applaud at performances, knowing when it's appropriate to applaud. How to make a phone call or receive a phone call. How to write an email um, and how to ask for directions. I wanted to take a moment here. I have a couple of short videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a couple of short videos that I wanted to share with you so that you can really get a good understanding and seeing what grace and courtesy lessons look like in the classroom. So this first one here is really uh, an example of what we talked about with role playing at the early childhood level. So this would be geared for children three to six years old. Um, and when I start the video here, this is exactly what the lesson would look like if it was presented or demonstrated in the classroom with the children, for the children, really helping them understand how to include someone, how to help someone feel included. Let me just make sure my volume is on here so you guys can hear everything. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, today we're gonna to show you some grace and courtesy lessons that we do at our school. The first one is how to include someone. Hey, Vanya. Hi. Would you like to play a game with me? I would love to, that sounds like fun. All right, come on, let's, let's go. go. So very basic, very simple, right? Your, your lessons with a three to six year old child um, 
should not and really cannot be very long. Their attention span is not very large. So you want it to be very short, sweet, to the point, uh, just allowing them to see what that polite engagement looks like. So after you would demonstrate this kind of role play, then you would provide the children an opportunity to practice as well. You could say, uh, Susie and Mark, would you like to practice? Uh, Susie, why don't you inv invite Mark to play with you? Um, Sally and Ronald, why don't you guys practice together? And maybe, uh, Ronald, maybe you're playing with trucks and you invite Susie to play with the trucks with you. Um, so it really giving them an opportunity to immediately put into practice the skill that you've shown them so that it helps solidify it for them so that they uh, remember how to use it when they're in that situation naturally or organically in the future. And I'm gonna try to skip ahead here to the next video. Sometimes it gives me a little challenge and wants to play this video again. So let's just see if it'll work. Okay. Today All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna stop my share and we are going to, I'm gonna skip ahead and then I'll share again. For some reason, it does not like to move forward when you have a video. <laughs> I don't know why that is, I've tried troubleshooting. All right. So this will look like the same video, uh, but it is different. Uh, the second video here is uh, another role-playing demonstration on how to politely decline an invitation. This is how to refuse an invitation. Hi, Vanya. Hi. Would you like to play? You know what? I don't feel like playing right now. Okay. This time, Vanya, let's switch roles. Okay. And I'll be the one. I'm always wondering if you wanted to go play with me. No, thanks. I don't feel like it. Oh, that's all right. Well, you know, you can always play with us if you want. Okay. Okay. All right. And I have one more video here. So again, I'm going to stop my share. I apologize for that. Um, and the next one, I think, uh, is probably my favorite. It is uh, kind of just showing what these grace and courtesy skills look like with children in the classroom. So it's a little feature um, of a look inside the classroom of children using some of these skills. Um, and this is one of my personal favorites. I absolutely love going into the classroom um, when, I, when I visit these days and seeing this in action. Um, it's children serving snack to their classmates. It's a really common practice in a Montessori early childhood classroom because the children often uh, prepare their own snack. Um, in fact, there are actually food prep works on some of the shelves, at what we call the practical life shelves in the classroom, where children can uh, have the experience of doing things like slicing bananas, slicing an apple, squeezing lemons, uh, juicing oranges so they can make fresh juice. And then afterwards, uh, if there's more than enough for just them, then the children are invited and encouraged to offer the snack that they've prepared to their classmates. Um, and sometimes another friend even follows along behind them with a separate tray that has a little trash receptacle where they gather the toothpicks or the cups uh, that they might have used when they were serving snack. And I just really feel like it's so beautiful. Um, it's just such a beautiful interaction and another uh, example is when you come in as a visitor, there's usually a child who has their that job that week to be the greeter. Um, they greet you when you come in. Another child offers you a little glass of water. Um, or if they cut the snack uh, while you're there, they might offer you a serving. It's just really so special and makes you feel so welcome. And that's what grace and courtesy uh, is intended to uh, facilitate amongst the children. So again, it's really simple, right? It doesn't include a lot of steps because it's hard for this age child to follow along if it does. So this child has sliced the banana 
has prepared them by placing a toothpick inside each slice and then walks around to his classmates and just asks, would you like a banana? And then they get an opportunity to practice their grace and courtesy as well by saying please and thank you um, or by politely declining, right? That goes back to uh, one of the, the lessons we just watched where they politely decline if they're not interested uh, in a slice of banana. All right, I'm gonna stop my share just one more time so I can move past that video. Uh, and we'll keep going. Next, we're gonna talk about why all of this is important. Um, and I've kind of hinted towards this a little bit already, right? Because it lays this really solid foundation for um, positive interactions, polite interactions, uh, but it really goes beyond that. So grace and courtesy lessons not only meet a child's need or children's needs towards these social interactions because they are very social uh, at these ages, but they also provide children with these tools, allowing them to be more independent and more successful both in the classroom and in life in general, right? A lot of these lessons and skills are things that we need throughout our lives. We need to know how to engage with other people. We need to know how to politely decline an invitation. We want to be courteous by holding the door open for someone. We wanna help someone when they drop something. We want to say please and thank you. So through these grace and courtesy lessons, children not only learn how to care for themselves and their environment, but also how to behave in social situations, how to care for others. By practicing uh, both the verbal and the physical grace and courtesy lessons, children develop social skills and really learn how to communicate effectively with other people and how to respectfully navigate their environment. And this, again, not only helps them in the classroom, but also in their future interactions uh, in every aspect of their lives. And I think something that's really important to highlight here that's not mentioned on the, the slide, but really encompasses all of these skills is that grace and courtesy is really what um, supports and promotes peace. And Dr. Montessori was a huge proponent for uh, peace education. And, and she really uh, kind of encouraged and uh, said quite a few times in a lot of her writings that children really were our hope. Um, they're our hope and our promise for mankind is what she said. And um, she said that the way, the only way that we'll ever achieve peace is through our children. So helping children understand these grace and courtesy skills encouraging them to use them, modeling them for them at a very young age, uh, really lays this foundation to help them become peaceful citizens of the world, um, really uh, having the power to make the world a better place. If you're interested in learning more about grace and courtesy, I always try to share some resources with you all. Uh, so that you have a place that you can find some more information. So if you are in, uh, interested, I would encourage you to check out some of these resources. Uh, the first is entitled Grace and Courtesy, A Picture Guide for Children and Adults. It's by Alicia Olson. And this is an easel style um, book that can be flipped and can be displayed in a classroom, in a home setting, to really give children this visual reminder of some of the grace and courtesy skills. It has lots of lovely artwork and then these simple one sentence messages that reinforce the grace and courtesy lessons. Things like, I walk with careful feet or I treat materials gently. And so a lot of classrooms will have the, this uh, easel type book displayed on maybe a practical life shelf, maybe on their peace table. And they, they'll flip it um, and then refer to it or really just leave it there for children to, to see as a reminder. Even if they can't read, they can see the visual and remember the lesson. Oh, that's right. I use walking feet in the classroom. Or, uh, oh, that's right. I'm not supposed to throw the materials. I'm supposed to treat them uh, kindly and use them gently. The next book here, the one in the middle, is called Grace and Courtesy, and it's by Jesse Donaldson and Peggy McDougall. And this is a children's book that has realistic pictures, uh, warm pictures, and very simple descriptions 
that remind children once again of these grace and courtesy lessons. And then the last is called Montessori at Home or School, How to Teach Grace and Courtesy. And this is by Deb Chitwood. Uh, this is a book that's in, uh, for adults. It's for teachers or for parents. And it discusses grace and courtesy for preschool through elementary age children. Um, and it's about embracing the Montessori philosophy and how to uh, teach these grace and courtesy skills to children. I would also encourage you, although not listed here because there's way too many uh, to include and it really just depends on the child's age. Uh, but I would encourage you, if you are looking for resources for incorporating these grace and courtesy lessons with your own children, or if you're in a classroom setting uh, with the children in your classroom, to really look for some of those books that we talked about earlier. Um, you can either search for um, books for children about social skills and things like Harry P. Spader, uh, Harry P. Spader, uh, Space Invader, that's a tongue twister. Um, or uh, Do Unto Otters, right? Those types of books will come up, but you can also search by specific uh, skill. You can search for something like a uh, book for toddlers about keeping your hands to yourself or a uh, book for an elementary child or elementary student about how to uh, make a phone call. And you'll find all different kinds of really great books that are geared for children at specific ages that have these um, engaging pictures that will draw them in. The language will be at their level so that they can easily understand it. A lot of humor is involved or those characters like we talked about to really just appeal to different aged children. And uh, uh, you will likely remember if you've attended a live class with me before that I like to close with a quote as well. I like to end our time together with a, a, some more words of inspiration and just a, a nice little refresher or reminder about the importance of what we discussed today. So this is another statement by uh, Dr. Maria Montessori. She shares, a child who becomes a master of his acts through repeated exercises of grace and courtesy and who has been encouraged by the pleasant and interesting activities in which he has been engaged is a child filled with health and joy and remarkable for his calmness and discipline. So going back to that first quote we talked about, um, Dr. Montessori really encouraged us to embrace grace and courtesy, to share these lessons with children because she believes that it was, was these exercises of grace and courtesy that really brought joy to children, um, that it, it facilitated these peaceful interactions and really led to what she calls here calmness and discipline. It's like it brings this inner discipline to children by being able to uh, peacefully, independently, and successfully engage with others and with their environment and to take care of themselves as well. Before I open it up to uh, some questions here, I try to save enough room at the end uh, for questions. I know you usually all have quite a lot. I did want to say thank you so much for being here uh, today, whether it was your first live class or you've come back uh, time and time again. I shared my contact information here on the screen with you. If you have any questions after uh, this session, please feel free to send me an email. Uh, I also have my website there and my social media handle. It's at Montessori.matters. My logo is down there in the corner, so you can find me on uh, Facebook, on Instagram. I'd love for you guys to follow along. I share a lot of Montessori and other education and parenting related content that you might